Steve Gelbs is standing by with one of the biggest Met fans on the planet, Steve. Mm. Yeah, Gary, that's right. One of the biggest Mets fans and, for my money, one of the best comedians out there right now, Kevin James. And, you know, Kevin, I got to start by saying this. I really appreciate you agreeing to do this interview because a colleague of ours over at SNY is Sal Licata, and I know he questioned your Mets fandom somewhat recently, and you had to call him up and, and put him in line on, on the radio. I, I had to set him straight. Uh, yeah, a buddy of mine called me and said, man, they're trashing you on the radio, saying you're not a true Mets fan. And I've been coming to the original Shea I mean I was I was there for you know I was there around 68 69 I started coming uh, four years old 69 and I, I can remember it you know it just it's just locked with me I've been a fan ever since loved 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 following the Mets so just to hear that I was tired too I got I was working all day and I was like who is this guy I'm calling him right now and uh, I was thankful they took my call. It was, and they were very cool. So. And you didn't even mention on the air that day that your daughter's name is Shay. So how could anyone that's, question you? That's a they, yeah. That was a give me. That would even. I'll take that off the table. You know. I said I'll go to the other stuff. But yes, I named my daughter Shay, and uh, been a crazy Met fan all my life. And you know, I know Brewer is, and I always we've always been. So it's like just to hear that, I was like, what? Well, what is your your best Mets memory growing up? You grew up on Long Island, born in 1965, so you've kind of been with this team from the beginning. Yeah, there were a bunch of them. I mean, I've I used to love so many of the, of the players growing up. Tommy Agee was my all-time favorite. Uh, I mean, but one of the biggest memories for me was the, the home run uh, Piazza hit after 9/11 was just incredible and. There's just been so many. The 86. I was here at the 2000 series with my dad. Uh, it was a, a great time. I was here last year. You know, it, it's it, it's just it's been fantastic. It's it's a great run, and I'm glad we're catching a little spark now, going you know heading towards the postseason. So it's gonna be fun. James Loney strikes out one away here for the Mets. Uh, I know that you you mentioned this briefly, actually in that interview, but. Ed Cranepool, you had a family friend who knew Ed Cranepool growing up, and, and he drove you one day to a, an awards dinner or something? It was a Little League dinner, and me and my brother, and uh, I don't know if it was somebody across the street who knew about like a friend of ours knew him. We drove in his, it was a little Volkswagen bug. I remember he took us to the awards, <laughs> and I remember he put his hand on my head, and he was like, like, and I was just, I was a kid who was just, I thought I was dreaming, man. I was like, and he, he drove us home, I remember that night, and dropped us off, and he was just a great guy. And it was a, a, amazing. It was an amazing, uh, you know, night that stuck with me forever. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I got him. I'm representing. Really good. There you go. Yeah. So, when when people look at your career, the one thing that a lot of people probably don't know is that you actually turned down a role in a Steve Bartman movie because you didn't want to be a Cubs fan, correct? I, that was part of it. I'm not a Cubs fan. I got to represent the Mets only. But it was also because I just felt he had been. I felt so horrible for him. And even though the movie was going to be, uh, you know, show him in a great light and show him what you know the, the human side of it and what this poor guy went through, I felt like he had enough, you know, enough of the spotlight on him, and he just didn't want it. So I just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch this. I just so uh, we walked away. Tell us about this new show that you're in right now, which uh, is airing on CBS and uh, back to TV for you. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, it's called Kevin Can Wait. Uh, it's on 8:30. Uh, it starts Monday night, uh, and uh, I play a retired police officer who, uh, after 20 years with all his buddies, this is by the way, this is all my buddies on Long Island. A bunch of them are all retired Long Island cops that went into the academy at the same time, and they're all retired now at the same time, and. You know they're starting their life over again. They're back home. It's kind of weird with the family again operating and seeing how how things are run. You know they have their own systems in place. You know family. So when when guys come home, it's, it can be a little difficult. But you know we're trying to get in our day drink and have some fun. <laughs> Go to Met games and uh, that's it. We look forward to watching. And guys, one other quick note on Kevin James, a Ward Melville graduate. So and he was a, a big. Uh, athlete there, football, wrestling, maybe set the stage a little bit for yes, Stephen Matz, right? Right, Mr. Matz, baby. Okay, well, Kevin, we appreciate uh, a few minutes here. We look forward to watching that show. We appreciate it. Gary, right, back up to you guys. So it isn't just the left-handed pitchers from Warren Melville who make good. Nice to see. <laughs>